Greetings and blessings in the name of Jack Rastafari. Right? I'm a proud Rasta man. I don't care what nobody says. I'm a Rasta man that don't believe in religion. I think religion is crap. Right now, currently listening to the Warren Valentine Show. In case those of you guys wondering why you're hearing all that noise in the background, this brother speaks a lot of truth, man. He comes on every day, Monday through Friday, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the Empowerment Network. Like I said, he's trying to get a deal with um, Sirius XM to get on the um, satellite shows because they have a deal that they're trying to strengthen the deal that they have with Sirius XM. You guys need to check out the show, man. He's talking about a lot of deep stuff, man. And um, I have a clip of where he's talking to this woman from South Carolina where she's willing to fight to help help people of color get health care. And um, also I want to reiterate on, on what's going on. Um, the next clip you're going to see is about healthcare. It's about my problem and frustration with healthcare because the deadline is already passed, which was yesterday, and I still can't afford healthcare, and I'm not insured, and I don't qualify for Medicaid, even though I'm paying taxes. And they're taking my friggin' taxes out of my check, and I make barely any money as it is. So check it out. Also, I'm going to show you a clip about the, um, the German scientist, the Nazi German scientist that the American government has secretly hired. There's a, um, how should I say, there's a story on that where it's a woman that she mentions it in her book. And I need you guys to watch the clip. It's just show that I, it, it came on the show I was watching. I happened to catch it yesterday by accident with Wayne Eichel's in the show and Judy Whipra and um, usually Mc, uh, McLara, John McLara, usually comes on himself. But I didn't see him that night. But I did record it. I did record it so I could show you the clip about how um, the American government, your government, is secretly hiring evil Nazi scientists from Germany to work in places like NASA and other places in the government. So you gotta want, you gotta understand and come to come to your understandings and wonder to yourself. You know what I mean, and, and and say, damn, we should question my government because the American government is, is doing a lot of these things under my back, behind my back, you know. So this people look. You know, people look out for it. It's going to be the next clip. And it's also going to talk about how on the last minute, since it was March 31st, which was yesterday, the last minute, how many people tried to get health care and couldn't get it. And um, how they couldn't get online. And how many problems they had at the last minute of health care. I'm going to file an example, as you all know by now. Because I don't want to deal with this expensive health care. They say if more, when more people sign up, it'll get cheaper. So I'm going to wait until next year when it gets cheaper. And see if it's true what they say. But so far, from what I've been seeing about this Obamacare, to me, it's bullshit. And I'll tell anybody that because you got all these black celebrities that blindly support the president. But I've seen a lot of stupid shit that the president's been doing lately. And no black people want to come out and say anything. Nobody wants to do that. I guess they're afraid that if they do that, then they won't, they'll won't. lose their fans. They'll lose something. Hey. I ain't afraid to lose nothing because I ain't got anything right now. I'm just now trying to come back and restart my career. And my career is a long career. I've been rapping since 1997, doing music since 1997, and I got some unreleased facts since 1997. And I may find that tape and play it to you so you can all hear what I've been doing back in the day. I've been an artist since back then, and I'm, I'm, I'm out there trying to make things happen. And I'm going to tell you the truth. And I'm going to spread the truth like viral. And I hope y'all all share these videos that I make and get them out. And another thing, man, I'm, I apologize for being very late with the True Dude shows, and I'll tell you why I've been late with these episodes. Episode two was a week behind, and now this episode is a week behind. So what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start recording the episodes whenever I can do them. So that means it, you're not going to probably see me every week like I planned. It's just going to be every time when I can get it. Shout out to Tyler Perry for finally coming out with the Tyler Perry show. That further inspired, inspired me to come out with the True Dude show. The True True Show is actually an old show because I've actually done this like about since 2004. And it's on a DVD. It's called The Life of True Drew where I was doing my music, showing people my dance skills, and um, showing people that I could flow, and, um, you know, basically stuff like that. It's on, it's on DVD. I have the actual copy of the DVD, but I don't know how to copy it yet, and I haven't figured out how to use it yet. But I have the copy of DVD. It's the original True True Show. It's the very, very first episode, long before these. But this is actually the official series to that show. I want to thank you all for watching, man. I really appreciate it. I didn't know I was going to get this much support. The other day I saw 50 people that saw my post, and I was surprised. 50 people. So I'm going to keep on coming out with the truth, and I hope you guys can come to the, um, listen to it and, you know, get it out there. I'm going to show you some things in the clip. And this clip is going to show you a lot of, a lot of, I have a lot of clips to show you, so... 
I'm going to show you that. And, um, again, thank you for watching my show. And I appreciate it. Bless up. Peace. Yes, I finally got Warren, y'all. This is him. All right, Warren, do your thing. Come on, Warren, speak the truth. Considerably less. We're getting better coverage. 
full of shit. Exactly. Thank you. Don't like when they tip half the story. I met from there and like page after page Thank and you. never got me to where I needed to be so I was like I haven't given up on this and I'm just going to go here. <laughs> again, more than 6 million people had signed up from the federal and state run exchanges. That's about a million shy of the original goal. Estimates from some insurers show 80% of those applicants had paid their premium. In addition, more than 4 million people will be eligible for coverage through Medicaid. At the White House, That's a lie because I don't qualify for Medicaid. Painted a picture of success. Lord, but she knows something to do. Paint the picture and keep painting it, but no matter how you slice it, it's still fucked up. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it, it leaves them with, um, you know, they need to go back to the drawing board when it comes to other means of trying to attack. Uh, a law that is providing opportunity and security to millions of Americans. Well, you're not helping me. Stop speaking for, for only fewer of the people. Tell him, Lindsey Graham. You know what? I might go Republican because a lot of this shit the Democrats are doing are crap. Obamacare is a monstrosity. I don't care what no one says. The administration is granting extensions to anyone who has personal issues or technical problems. Like me, I have personal issues. That's me. I fit in there. Some of the many questions being asked today. We're joined again by Mary Agnes Terry of Kaiser Health News and Susan Nessler, a health analyst for the news hour. Welcome back to the program. Good to be with you. So, Susan, what's the very latest thing that's happened today? We know uh, people were madly signing up, at least some were madly signing up. What were the final numbers? Well, we don't know the actual final numbers for today, but we do know that the Department of Health and Human Services says that 1.6 million visitors uh, visits were made to healthcare.gov, the federal health insurance website, uh, and that more than 800,000 calls were placed to call centers. And that, of course, leaves out what happens in the state exchanges. So we know there are 14 I see I have trouble getting people. exchanges, and of course the exchange in, in uh, the District of Columbia. We don't know what the numbers were there, but it's quite conceivable that potentially uh, another million people have signed up in the past few days. So for anybody who's watching who hasn't signed up, they want to sign up, how much time do they have with the penalty if they don't? Well, right now, we can go on the website if you're enrolling through the Federal Exchange and check a box saying that you want to get on. Uh, you'll get an email potentially later today. We already know the administration has said if you've had difficulty enrolling to date, you have at least until the middle of April to enroll. And then we have these special enrollment periods that uh, where people with various other circumstances will be able to enroll. And there's no outside deadline that's been set on that yet. So it could be we'll be getting more enrollment for the next several months. The other important thing to point out is that anybody who wants to sign up for Medicaid who's eligible can sign up at any point. So Medicaid enrollment will continue throughout the year. No deadline on that. Here I have the whole purpose of this in the beginning, or at least a large part of the purpose, was to get people who didn't have health insurance uh, to get covered. How, in, the, in terms of big picture, how is that going? Well, it's going fairly well. The administration's point of view. The exactly, for their point of view. Six million was hit last week. They're hoping they can get more folks enrolled. But I think a key test here is the affordability question. Do people find the premiums affordable? No. How about their co pays? No. Their own pocket expenses? No. The deductible? No. It seems to be the real test that we have Thank to Thank you. Have. Finally, someone touched it. And what are you finding about that? I mean, what, what are you hearing? I know mean, you've been reporting on this for months now. Are you finding. I mean, is the preponderance of evidence that people are saying, you know, I, this isn't as bad as I thought it is and as expensive? Or what are you hearing? It's kind of all over the map. I mean, it really varies depending on where you live. How competitive is the marketplace where you live? How many insurers want to get involved? Where the prices of local hospitals and physicians are charging? How does that impact the negotiation? And there's variance. For example, our reporters found out in Philadelphia, you might pay 77% more for a policy if you're a 40-year-old man than if you got that same policy in Pittsburgh. Now, these subsidies can help with that cost, but in Georgia, for example, prices can double in one part
part of the state versus another. We found a rural Georgia town where the premiums were actually more expensive than Beverly Hills, which is not what you would think. You see what I'm saying? Is there a mess all over the country? Well, this is a complicated law laid on top of what was already a very complicated affordability. insurance. Right, so, right. Yeah. Well, uh, other ways to look at it are as follows. We know that 80% of the people who have signed up on the marketplaces so far have been eligible for the premium tax credit. And for some people, that lowers the cost to zero. They pay zero premium to get coverage. So we'll have to see how all of this comes together when the final numbers are in. And that's not Medicaid. That's, that's people that have, people who have co co private coverage now through the exchanges but are paying a zero premium, basically nothing because they have substantial premium tax credits. We know, uh, Mary Agnes, there, there's been relentless criticism from Republicans. We're hearing it uh, again today. They either want to repeal it or fix it, change it dramatically. What are you finding from from ordinary folks? And what do you, I wanna, I'm interested in hearing from both of you. What, what about the, the actual players, the healthcare providers, not just the insurance company, but hospitals, doctors, and others? What, how are they feeling about it at this point? People seem to like individual elements of the health law. For example, polling has shown if you talk about no more annual limits, no more lifetime limits. People like that idea, keeping their adult child up to age 26 on their health insurance plan. But again, the problem comes in looking at the affordability. And it's really going to be a local story. Um, we talk about this at the national level, and that makes sense, but it really will depend on what is the risk pool, what are the premiums set at the local and the state level as people look at this going forward. Well, it's variable again. Uh, the anecdotal evidence from some insurers are that they're feeling pretty good about the risk pool, that lots of younger people have signed up. Uh, it won't be true nationally. We'll see other insurers with different experiences in different parts of the country. Same thing with health care providers. If you're in an area where there isn't a lot of access to, say, good primary care, uh, uh, some of the community health centers are feeling very much under the gun and overrun because so many people now are getting coverage and presenting with illnesses that they've had for a long time and haven't gotten care for for a long time. And, and so in terms of hospital reaction, hospitals, uh, doctors, nurses, it's, it's really, a, it depends on where you are and what the, and what the, the structure, the health care structure is. Very much so. It's a patchwork around the country. And you both have been covering this <laughs> nonstop since last October, really even before. But this today is an important milestone, Mary Agnes. What would you say the next measuring milestone is? What do we look for? What do you look for next? If people think it's a good thing for them, do they find the end of coverage of work? Can they get access to the providers they wanted? Some of these policies have fairly high co-pays, out-of-pocket out of costs, deductibles, and so on. How does that play out? We've talked about how many people have paid their premium. The insurance industry is saying that's about at the 80% mark, which is the industry standard. But as this goes on, does someone, do people sign up for a premium and then decide, gosh, they just can't cut it? Maybe the subsidies don't help them enough. Maybe they do. I think it's really going to take a while to see this play out, to see if it works for people, if they think it's a big part. Nazi scientists. Concentration camp experiments brought to the U.S. in a secret program to advance American security interests during the Cold War. It sounds like the plot of a film drama that actually happened and on a large scale. The story is told in the new book, Operation Paperclip, author from journalist Danny Jacobson, who is now welcome to you. Thank you. So these were top scientists in the German war effort, sought out by the U.S. military in, as the war was coming to end. That's right. These were Hitler's top weapons makers, and Operation Paperclip became a classified military... Her name is Annie Jacobson. ...in the United States. It also had a public face, so there was on the one hand the truth about the program kept secret, and on the other hand the idea that we'll tell the, the public that these are the good Germans. The good Germans, but they are about We should say there are maybe 1,600. We document about 21 of them. Dedicated Nazis, some as I said, involved in horrific stuff. What they did was no right to the people who were, to the Americans who were seeking them. Certainly to the American military intelligence officers who were interviewing them. The idea that they were involved in war crimes was really necessary to be kept secret, and that's exactly what happened. So in the book, I think I unveil a lot of the truth about this program that has remained clouded for decades. So give us 
this an example of one, of one of the figures that intrigued you? Well, I think one of the worst case scenarios was that the United States military made the decision to bring Walter Schreiber. This was Major General Dr. Walter Schreiber, the Surgeon General of the Third Reich. He wound up at a military facility in Texas. And doing what? Well, in what, NASA? Dr. Schreiber had been involved in a, a vaccine program for the Reich, which sounds like a nice program, but it was actually a program to uh, work on protecting German soldiers from these biological weapons that were also being manufactured. So he was involved in war crimes in the concentration camps. He became a prisoner of the Soviets and then defected to the United States. We saw him as someone who we absolutely wanted here for his knowledge. So in the United States, it still remains unknown what exactly he did, only that he worked for the U.S. Air Force in Texas. You know, this becomes, of course, a story of, of practical versus ethical choices, right? To whether to decisions made, whether they look the other way or forget about the past in order to advance and gain advantage over the Soviets, if you should, should you say, during the Cold War. Absolutely. I mean, the Cold War got hot very quickly, and the Soviet threat was this foreboding menace. And the idea was, certainly the Pentagon, and among the Joint Chiefs of Staff who were really running this program was, if we don't get these Nazi scientists, surely the Soviets will. Was there much debate at the time about, about the ethics of it? Absolutely there was a debate, and I think that's what makes the narrative so compelling, because you have some people, including high-ranking generals at the Pentagon, who are loath to work with Hitler's former scientists. And you have others who say, this must be done, and it will be done. You said we, we don't really know much about uh, the case of Walter Schreiber, what he did. Mm -hmm. Some of them we do know, right? And the very famous case is, uh, most famous is Werner von Braun. Yes, he came here, he was the head of our rocket program, and brought 114 fellow V-2 rocket makers with him. And this program, again, had a very beneficent case. Um, only now do we know the facts are very different about what those scientists were involved in at the end of the war in what was called the Nordhausen Slave Labor Factory, uh, deep in the tunnel, the concentration camp for his prisoners building the V2 rockets. So in a case like that and others where we know that they they did they did accomplish things for the U.S. when they came here. And then the question, and you like this, does accomplishment cancel out past crimes? That, I think, is the conundrum of Operation Paperclip. Mm -hmm. And I hope that people come to the, their own conclusions on that, because certainly uh, the idea that you would excuse some of this horrific, horrific behavior during the war becomes, the, you know, that big moral question. And what, and what happened to these guys in the end? You know, the number of them just lived out their days quite well here in the US. You know, the obituary for Dr. Theodore Benzinger in the New York Times, I think, kind of sums it up. He died in 1999, and the New York Times loved him as a, a, a good German scientist who his life to the, mil the U.S. military. It leaves out the fact that he worked with Hitler very closely during the war and was actually on the original list of Nuremberg war crimes trials. And yet, he was released into U.S. custody and came to the United States. So this idea that you can just whitewash someone's past, I think is important to look into and to investigate so that that truth can be reconciled. All right, that's the fascinating story. Operation Paperclip, the secret intelligence program that brought Nazi scientists to America and Jacobson. Thanks so much. <laughs> what a roller coaster that was! Was a big roller coaster, wasn't it? Some of y'all shouldn't even be shot because half of y'all that's watching my own videos already know about this stuff. So, I mean, it's not like you don't know. The truth is out there. Now, if you look at the um the media circus on the healthcare, the Obama, the affordable healthcare, the Obamacare, you notice how a lot of people are trying to hype it up to make it bigger than what it is. They're trying to say that it's too good, it's too good for them. And you got all these celebrities like Tatiana Ali saying that it's great. It works for them. But if you think about it, Tatiana Ali and I'm and me, 
we're in two different situations. Tatiana Ali is successful, famous, and is rich. Me, I was somewhat famous, almost became famous, and working at Burger King. So, I mean, it's a big difference. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that kind of support that, that some people get to get where they are to where they can just easily say, okay, let me just go ahead and take this little pocket change and afford health care. To them, health care is a pocket change because they can afford it. So they're going to promote other people to do it because they think that everybody else can do it. But the, the, um, the truth of the matter is, this, this is reality. This is a reality check that I got to give to them and everybody here. A guy like me that works at Burger King that only makes about what? First, when I started working at Burger King, I was making $7. Seven dollars and seventy nine cents, you know. And then it went up to seven dollars and ninety three cents an hour. The average hours that I was making per week was twenty to twenty five hours. If you go ahead and go ahead and and, 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 and add that up or multiply it, sum it up, that check before taxes is going to be maybe two hundred and twenty. No, two hundred and twenty-five dollars. So by the time, no, not even no, it'll be more than that. But after taxes, I get about two hundred and twenty-five dollars. I don't want to sound too convoluted because then I almost messed up. But the truth of the matter is this: I can't afford it. And I know the majority of you inside there, in the world where I live, that's watching this can't afford it. And those of you that can, you know, I'm proud of that. But what about people like me that can't? Afford and then at the same time, if you can't afford health care, they don't care. They charge you a $95 penny or a $200 penny, whatever they said they were going to charge you. I say $95 because that's why I'm hearing more now. So that means I still got to come out my pocket regardless to this pimp system called health care. And you know what? Lately, I noticed that the Republicans are starting to make more sense to the Democrats. The Democrats are just pushing their own agenda because they know that their time is up. Obama has less than two years left in office. Because remember, he gets out in 2016. And that's when I believe America's probably going to stop falling more into chaos. Because Obamacare would already be passed, and you're still going to be paying every month for the premiums. You're going to have to pay a premium, pay every month, and you pay the copay. You heard all that shit that you heard on the, um, the news hour. You already heard what was going to happen. You already know that it's too late. There's nothing you can do about it. Because none of y'all didn't want to fight for it when it came. All y'all want to do is push and support it. And guess what? I happen to be one of those dumb idiots that did it. Because I thought it was going to work. I'm one of those same dumb idiots that voted for the president to put him in office because I knew that he was the better choice than John McCain or Mitt fucking dummy. Yeah, he was. Obviously. No matter how you look at it, Obama was still a better choice than Mitt Romney and John McCain or John McCain, whatever you want to call him. Uh, sometimes John McCain does make sense in some of the statements that he makes. But if he had become president, you already know what he was going to do. He's going to go to war against uh, what was the country he was having war against? Vietnam or Korea or something? Asian country that he had a war against, our people's over there, we wanted to fight against them. Go ahead and do a fair respect against them. And right now, as you can see, with this shit war at hand, we are worried about Russia right now. Russia's our main problem. Not only do we have to, may have to worry about Russia, but you still have to worry about North Korea. Don't forget, North Korea and the U.S. already has a shaky relationship. I can already smell war, World War III up in the air. It's just nice and fresh and ready to happen. And don't forget, China's already trying to um, occupy Taiwan. The fact that Russia already overtook Crimea, guess what? Remember, Russia was a Soviet country, right? So common sense will tell you, don't leave that around back in the 1980s, 1990s. Know that Russia was our what's called USSR, the, the, the Soviet Union crap that they had going on with, the red country and all that stuff, the communist country. China's, China's con was communist sometime after. And now China is, last time I think China, not Taiwan I was thinking, China was threatening to take over Tibet. What makes you think it's going to stop China from actually annexing Tibet and making it a part of their country? What makes you think it's going to stop them from doing it? No. After what they saw Russia did, and I know Chinese ain't stupid. Chinese are some smart brothers. And I'm only one of the few people that know that the Chinese people are black people. And I'll tell you how I know this fact. If you go on the internet, if you go on the internet, you can type the search, put the first Chinese are black. And it'll actually show you the proof because the Chinese professor already proved it. That we that they were black people. 
in the people in the Bible, they are the Sinites in the Bible, the, the, the tribe. They come from the tribe of Ham. The Ham was the darkest tribe. The first Chinese were so dark, they were dark like tar. They still had this, they still had their eyes like this too. They still had all that. All those features were still there because they came with those features. Just like you see those Indians today, those so-called Indians, they're not a race. No, they're not. We need to wake up call about who the Indians really are. Indians are nothing but mixed people. Indians are, this is what Indians are. 40% of the uh, of the so-called Chinese or Asians of today. No, 20%. I said that wrong. It's 20% of the so-called Asians. Then you have 40% Caucasian, and the other 40% is those Hamites. So they're really technically, since the Asians were originally Hamites in the beginning from the Hamite people, that means technically they are 60% Hamite of Hamite origin, and the other 40% Caucasian. That means they are more black than white. Because remember, I already, told, I already told you that the original Chinese are black. You're all, even the Filipinos, all those people. All the Filipinos, the Japanese, the Vietnamese, and all these Eases and these Enos, or whatever you want to call them, these Asians, our brothers and sisters, whom I love very much, they're all black people. But guess what? They don't want to acknowledge that. The tribe of Ham, it even tells you who the tribe of Ham is. The tribe of Ham was the darkest race. And you, you can't dispute that. What are you going to do? Tell God that you're not black? That's the only thing you can do. So at the end of the day is this. Back to my point. The point of the matter is, after Russia took over Crimea, you already know that China's going to do the same thing. And they're going to take over Tibet. There's going to be no stopping them because China has China's like probably China's probably now the most powerful country in the world. America's right behind it now. We already know that America's days is coming on. And now that you know these facts that's going on. I don't know what you guys are going to do with these facts. You're probably not going to believe me because to me, as far as y'all concerned, y'all going to look at me and say everything I say is crap. So all you got to do is look it up and research it yourself. Now, I want to speak on that that Nazi, the Nazi Germanys that came to the United States. I've already knew of this. Now, in the interview, when she was being interviewed, she did not mention the part where you have Nazis that work for NASA. You do. That National Space Association, whatever National North America Space Association, whatever you call it, or something like that. I support him. I'm supporting him because my brother wants to be a part of it, and I wish him the best because that I ain't gonna lie. NASA is doing great things, and they're trying to make life better for us in case of space or whatever. But at the same time, there there's a dark side to that because there's a lot of men that think that they want to build a, a kingdom over earth they're saying that they want to build a kingdom over the heavens of the earth that's what some people are saying and stuff like that but i ain't looking into all that conspiracy theory stuff i know all that stuff is a part of illuminati i know that nasa nasa is part of the illuminati i already know that that's that's it's called the government system the government system is an illuminati period the point of the matter is this you guys love America. You guys are so patriotic for America. And so am I. I love this country. I'm not born here, but I grew up here. I come from Jamaica and Great Britain. But I can speak fluently in all three language, in all three different English accents. I can speak Jamaican accent. I can speak an English American accent. And I can speak a British accent whenever I feel like it. But I've been here. I've been living in this country for over 30 years. And I'm a citizen here. And I work hard just like everybody else. That, that works hard here. And I see a lot what's going on. I see a lot of things that are going on around here. And basically what I'm trying to do is just get my facts across and let you guys understand and try to find out for yourself. I'm just going to put the information out there and hope that you will just take the information and just run with it and take it and say, let me let me see if this guy is saying true. Don't just block me and say I'm telling a lie. Just try and look for the information yourself. What I do with a lot of people, when I doubt what people say, you know what, I, I still go to find out the information about what's going on. I still try to go to find out about it. And um, I hope those of you who sign up to healthcare, I wish you guys the best. And I say congratulations. And I appreciate um, And I'm happy for you. But I can't say the same for myself because I'm still struggling trying to figure out what kind of healthcare to get. High co-pays and it doesn't cover dental. And it doesn't cover medical. Uh, it doesn't cover um, vision. Sorry, it covers medical, but it doesn't cover vision. It doesn't cover dental. And as far as I'm concerned, I got a lot of dental work that I need done. You know, what I'm saying everybody does. Every six months, you gotta see a dentist. I haven't seen a dentist in a nice little while now, and I can't afford a dentist. 
The average, my average trip to the dentist costs over a grand. I mean, come on, how can I afford that every trip? And that's all I got to say about that. And now I am going to finally delve into the issue, delve into the issue that we got going on with our brothers and sisters. But before I continue on with that, I would like to go ahead and get into our next segment and um, show you some things. So um, stay tuned for the Choo Choo Show going into the next clip. And I'm going to show you some different stuff. I'm going to show you some other clips. And you guys need to be educated. All right? You do some research. I do research every day. When I'm not at work. And when I come home from work, do a little bit of research and try and get information so that I can tell everybody else it. And hopefully everybody else around with it. Because we are really behind on a lot of things that we need to be ahead with as far as information is. A lot of things we don't know is being pulled around our eyes. So stay in tight. I got you. Now, check it out, guys. This segment is about a couple that has received 167 grand while living on a $2.5 million yacht. These guys are rich and they're living off the healthcare system. Check it out. This is a story on the, on the conservative channel on the Fox News with, um, I think her name is Megan Kelly or something like that, the Kelly file. Check it out. Came as a result of them submitting repeatedly fraudulent documents to the system and getting away with it. How do you get your hands on a $1.2 million yacht with welfare benefits? Well, that is one of the main questions here because you asked the prosecutor questions about what was this person, you know, this couple's income, and they haven't filed tax returns for the past 10 years. And so it's very difficult to, difficult to find out where their income is coming from. And as the prosecutor describes, these people seem to be conning everyone out of their money. And because they weren't having, the, uh, the, the, they were using different addresses on these different, you know, a dozen different uh, forms they were submitting to the welfare offices in Minnesota while they were living on a yacht in Florida, they were able to fraud the Minnesota government out of their welfare payments, but they were also gathering payments from Florida. Um, when they had their child in 2006 and 2007, all of their medical payments were paid for through the Minnesota medical system that is supposed to be reserved for the poor. And yet here we are later uh, with this couple who was living a, a very luxurious life on the run. A warrant has been uh, put out for uh, Mr. Kism's arrest, and they believe the couple has left the country yeah, to a on, warmer place, the prosecutor said. They're on the <laughs> lamb. They're on the lamb. It's unbelievable. Uh, they've yeah, been posing as ridiculous. Scottish aristocrats for some period of time, which I guess is not that hard when you are boating around in a yacht. But Katie will continue yeah. to follow it. Come back when they catch him. Okay. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> See Come That's on. the crap you got to deal with, man. That's the crap you got to deal with over and over and over again. That's the system. Be rich and be an Edomite. And you guys, those of you who don't, who don't read the Bible and don't know what an Edomite is, let me educate you. And the common is not a racist common. You see, if you're a rich man and you're a white person, you can get away with anything. If you're poor and you're black, you get thrown to the wolves, don't you? Check this out. Warren Ballantyne also talked about on his radio show today about this man. He's, he's um he's uh, here to the, the DuPont. I think it's called the DuPont Dynasty. And he has a, I think he had a three-year-old and an 11-month-old or whatever. I don't remember. But it was a three-year-old daughter that he molested. He raped his three-year-old daughter. And guess what? He's facing no jail time. None. Absolutely none. What's that tell you about your system? What does that tell you? Number two. You remember that? I forgot this girl. It was this white girl that was, um, I forgot what she did. She committed some kind of crime, and I wish I recorded that. So wish I did, so I can make it a part of my segment. You know what? You know what happened? She can't face jail time because guess what? She's too pretty. <laughs> Have you ever heard anything that ridiculous? But when you see black folks get into the same situation, namely black women, because I see a lot of black women being thrown. Remember that black lady who got thrown into jail because she fired shots nearby her husband? She didn't fire them at him. She fired them away just to warm, just to say, stay away from me because you're beating me up too much. And she has kids with him and she's married to him. She went to jail for it. And now they're still fighting to get her out of jail. But guess what? George Zimmerman got to walk up and murder a black kid. Yeah. That white dude just shot... Trayvon Martin in cold blood. And yes, George Zimmerman is white. You guys want to say he's Hispanic? Half of him is Hispanic, but guess what? 
You are your father's seed. Learn your history. If your daddy's white, you're and white. So guess what? It happens like that. And we don't stand up and say, let's stand up for ourselves. Me, I don't believe in racism because I'm totally against it. But everything you're seeing is a product of racism. And if you continue to be reactive, then nothing's going to happen. If you're just going to sit down there and be active just because you see something injustice going on against your own people, then nothing's going to happen. I'm not saying I can do anything myself, but I do try. I do a lot of things. Like, I do, I do protests too, only when I can get to them. My mom, the other day, she went to do the... Um, she went to do that protest thing with the um, SEIU that I was I uh, told you I was going to put footage of. Well, I didn't get footage because I had to stay home and I had to um, I had a lot of things I had to do, so I couldn't go. But, however, I have been to the previous SEIUs and, my, and I'm, in, I'm in some of the footage that they have in those, but I can't retrieve that footage in your team because I don't know where to get it from. Been on the news, been interviewed by the news. And I'm actually making a revolution. I'm actually doing some, I'm actually taking action. So when you guys see me here making all kind of noise and babbling and all that stuff, I'm actually doing something. I've taken that. The first time I've actually really taken a step to take action was when I was in Atlanta, Georgia. I marched with Al Sharpton and those people in, in 2008 when we were trying to get um, our first mixed president in office because Obama's technically not the first black president because they forgot to mention Abraham Lincoln and you forgot to mention Dwight Eisenhower. Dwight Eisenhower does have black in his blood. And there's some a lot of other presidents that they don't even mention that, that actually do. So they want to say that Obama is actually the first African-American president. He's actually maybe the fourth or fifth, maybe even sixth African-American president that we have. Because I learned that there's a lot of other presidents that are mixed. But they can pass as white, so they just throw them in there and say, this is what we have to do. But I'm Choose You of the Choose You Show. I appreciate you all guys for looking into my segment. I think I'm going to do a freestyle set because remember I told you the segment is about me, this, this episode, and I'm going to go film for the episode four. I'm getting ready for episode four right now. I'm actually dropping this today. Today is April 1st. I'm going to drop it today. I got some more work to do because I got to go back with Sullivan and Cagliano. That was the phone you heard ringing in the background. For those of you who heard it, I got a missed call. I know it's them. They're um, looking to contact me because I haven't been in school in quite a few days. I've been working a lot of hours at my work at Burger King so I can get a decent paycheck so I can sell for enough money to actually... Enter in this Obamacare for next year. I'm finally exempt, and I'm going to go ahead and get Obamacare. I have no choice, because if I don't, it's the law. If I don't get it, I'm going to have to pay a fine, or I'm going to suffer. Um, those of you guys, keep on tuning in. The Warren Valentine Show just finished. It's after 1 o'clock. The show is over. The show that you hear in the background is um, Blackonomics. Um, I showed you the um, images of uh, Warren Valentine, um, Bev Smith, and... Uh, I forgot the name of the guy who does black economics, but he he does that because I'm actually trying to rush and put this together. Like I said, guys, I apologize for not getting the show out on time, but it's not easy to do it because when you don't have a lot of time to get your things done, I don't I don't really do this for a living. I'm only doing this because this is something I really want to do for a living, entertainment and do a show and to express our views. Now, before I go, I would like to finish up on the issue that I have with black women. Matter of fact, the, um, the next segment, this is the segment now. This is the next segment. We're into the segment now because I have my cameras, my camera that I was using to um, add the um, footage on here. It ran out of batteries, and I can't find any more batteries to put in there to go ahead and get more footage. So I had to use a computer to film this last footage of the uh, Kelly file and to do this last segment. What I want to say is to you black women, man. On Facebook earlier this week, I was on. The, I'm in this area called Relationship 2.0. I frequently go there a lot because I like the page. I know sometimes a lot of people talk craziness, but a lot of times when you hear the craziness, I hear the craziest you can hear the good. I like to preach and I like to speak the truth and I like to reveal what's going on in the black community. But I also talk about other communities and I believe that we all should work together. And I do believe that we all should come together no matter what color we are. I do believe that. But so far, it's slowly starting to happen. I see it happen. Now, I wanted to finish my issue on sisters. There was this black woman that was on Relationship 2.0 yesterday. And she was talking about how so many black American men are chasing after white women, which I think is somewhat true. Here's facts you need to know about interracial relationships or relationships in general. The majority 
of both white men and both and women mostly will date only in their own race. You have more, you, although you have way more white men that stay in their own race than white women, you do have white men that chase after Asian women, which are technically still black like I've already told you. All you got to do is look up the facts. And Hispanic Latino. But guess what? Here's another wake-up call. Yesterday on Facebook, I also proved that Mexicans are black. And I will also prove that Puerto Ricans are black. And I will also prove that Cubans are black. So no matter what you guys throw at me with this Hispanic Latino crap, it's not going to work with me. And you know, Hispanic, the only Hispanics that exist on the earth are the Portuguese and the people from Spain. Those are Hispanic. Because I'll tell you why. They started the Spanish language, which came from, uh, I believe, Italy. Because Italy, which is Rome, was they started the language called Latin. And Latin kind of created Spanish. And that was how you got the Latinos and the Hispanics over here. And all that because they came over and they raped the people. But before the Spaniards came over here and um in the past and raped those people in the lands like Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Mexico, and all these other places, they were already mixed with more blood. And guess what? You are your father's seed. You see those Spaniards that you see today? A good handful amount of them have black DNA in them. Their daddy was black, so guess what? They're black. That includes Antonio Banderas and those other people like them. They're black. But guess what? They can't acknowledge themselves as black. Not even Andy Garcia wants to acknowledge himself as black. You know what he does? He'll play he'll play characters like Lucky Luciano and play these other roles that should have been given to people, other people of color, but he claims that he's white. That's why I was wondering why I looked him up. The guy puts himself as white. He's Hispanic, and he's from Cuba. How could you be from Cuba and be Hispanic? That's what I'm trying to figure out. The guy doesn't even, the guy looks more like, he looks like he's um mulatto, half black, half white, which is what Spaniards really are. And pretty much that's what they are, and that's what Puerto Ricans really are too, and that's what Mexicans really are too. They're just a mix of black and white. There's only two races in the world, black and white. Asians are black, and like I told you, the Indians, the so-called Indians, what they were. I already told you that already. Look up the facts. All you got to do is go online and look it up. It actually shows you how, it shows you proof. Now, I know everything on the Internet is not true, but those things that they're showing you on the Internet is facts because they show you how to get the facts. So that way you know it's true. That's how I found out because I did extensive research to know this fact. Now, back to my point. I want to say that a lot of, I see a lot of black women saying that because they've seen a lot of black men that are messing around and flirting with white women and taking white women that they feel that they should just go out there and find a white man. A lot of black American women and a lot of black women in general fail to realize that there's a lot of different men out there. You got other men like the Indian men, the Asian men, the Latino men, all those men, they want you. I talk to these people personally, they want black women. They say, man, I love black women. I love their curves. I love their lips. I love how they look. I love their, I love how they talk. Everything, they got the best voices. They can sing better than everybody else. I keep hearing this from people that are Hispanic or Latino, whichever. It's confusing. And... People who are Asian, because Asians are always left out because Asian men, the first woman they try to chase after are white women, but white women don't want them. White women more like they'll either date a black man or they'll mostly stay with their own race, or sometimes they'll date a little bit into Latinos or whatever, but they will more stay with their own race. The only group of people I see date out their race more are black men and white women. Well, white women date out more than, than white men, but most white women still stay with their own race. That's actual. That's an actual fact. But, um... Like I'm saying, black woman, you do not have to date a white man to feel good. You can date a Puerto Rican man, a Mexican man, an Asian man, any of those men. They, tell them. The real ones that come out, they're going to say they want you. Some will hide and deny and say that black woman ain't nothing and da-da-da-da-da. They're hiding because they're afraid because they think that they can't get with you. But the truth of the matter is this. They want you. They really do want you. So... Y'all sisters need to stand up and stop thinking that the only kind of man that's good for you is white. I'm sick of hearing it. Every man is out there, not only white, you got everybody else that wants you too. I'm not saying not to date a white man because it's cool. It is cool to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you got other men that want you too. You're depriving them of, a, of an opportunity. Come on now, you telling me that you black women do not find Asian men the least attractive? You don't find Latino and Hispanic men, the least bit attractive? You don't find Indian men the least bit attractive? 
Come on, man. All of those are subclass of black black folk. They're still black people. And they want you. You should be happy that y'all the most wanted women in the world. But y'all, y'all got this negative mentality where you hate yourself and all this kind of stuff. You guys need to see out of the box because I always look outside the box. I don't keep myself in a box. If I keep myself in a box, I would never be where I am. The True True Show would have never existed if I stayed in the box. My music career would have never started if I stayed in the box. I want to thank you all guys for watching the True True Show episode 3. I delved into the issues as I told you I was going to do. And I'm greatly appreciated. I'm going to come out with another episode. Enjoy my music. I'm going to go ahead and drop a track of mine. So if I can find the track. Because I lost my damn my things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a track that I have on my computer. Let you all listen to it. It's one of my unreleased tracks. It's called Four Job People. It's a reggae track. You know what I'm saying? Rastafari. Jaw Works. North Rastafari. Now, you guys seen these guys throw up these signs and stuff like this, right? This is mine. Okay? And guess what it represents? The Star of David. This is opposite of the Illuminati. Completely opposite. This is a sign of good. A sign of purity. And a sign that I'm an Israelite. It's that sign. The Star of David. Sel Emperor Selassie I done it a lot. He always did that. Emperor Selassie I always opposed the Illuminati. The Illuminati was hunting him down. And that's why he's not alive today. They got rid of him. So, basically, man. You know how it is. Choo Choo Show, I'm dipping. Got to get ready for episode four, man. You know what it is, what it is. I'll come out with it as soon as I can. I'm going to keep releasing stuff. And I'm getting ready to come out with some music videos too, man. So check me out, all right? And um, keep checking out other shows too, man. Check out all the shows I told you. I told you to check out Warren Ballantyne, man. You guys need to listen to this. some deep stuff, all right? Peace. God bless. One love. Catch you on the other side. All right, y'all. I forgot something. I can't find the track I'm looking for, man. I don't know what happened. I misplaced it somewhere. And um, I looked everywhere for the track, and I don't know what I did with it. I had the um little um the flash the flash drive that I could put in the computer so I could upload it and let y'all hear my music, and I just can't find it. So um, I want to go ahead and see if I could just do the song if I can remember the song, but I can't remember the song very well. So what I'm gonna do is a little freestyle for y'all. Listen to my freestyle flow, okay? Check it out, cause I've been doing freestyle for a good minute, and it's been it's been. It's been a little while. I'm a little bit rusty, but bear with me, man. This is a freestyle flow. This is the Chuju Spotlight. Hey, yo, check it. One, two with the flow. Hit you hardcore like my name's G.I. Joe. I come in and I bust through your door. Give you two shots and you ain't there no more. And I ain't talking about shots like a gun. I'm the number one stunner stun. You know that I always won. Because I'm always the greatest MC when it comes to it. And anything come at me, I go straight through it. I can't stop. I'm never going to flop. I keep it to the rhythms of the hippity hop. Now, I ain't going to say that I'm so crazy. Because if I was crazy, I would be like Jay. Easy, sell my soul to the devil and yeah it's just that simple i'm gonna show you a little something when i bust up on this demo i'm a real hero don't care about the fame i'm gonna show you a little something when i step up in the game i got so much style i can step to your dame and anybody try to step at me they know they ass is lame i got that gravy flow that always got that hook now watch me do my thing i tell you truth like a book like the holy bible a real truth revival don't you know man i got this flow with no recital yeah it's freestyle flow here i go once again Again, been doing this shit here since way back when. Got mad love to you and got mad love to everyone. That's how I do it, man. That's how I do it. Nice, son. Yeah, love the game. Love how I got at it. Now I'm so mad, now I throw automatic shots at any enemy that want to step here. Show them how I do it. Do it this rhyme every year. It's always something different. It's always something nice. And anybody want to step at me, best to think twice. Because now I'm so dope. Got the hero style. Now I got it nice with that funky dial. Now I got my own groove and got my own swag. So nice in the bag. Don't even need to brag. I'm out. Peace. True you love. I get rid of freestyles every time, but you know what I'm saying? It's just it is what it is. I'm just trying to do my thing in the game, man. Showing y'all love, man. So get ready for the next segment, True Drew, episode three. I'm going to continue hitting you with the truth. I know this one's a bit long. It's about an hour long, man. I should y'all for sticking